Welcome to our daily Bible reading. We are continuing in Ezekiel and Ecclesiastes. So let's get on with it. Let's pray. Father, help us to hear your voice. May our hearts be filled with the Word of God and may it transform our lives, I pray. Bless those who are joining with me and participating in this daily Bible reading, including Marco. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, now, Jerusalem is being is being uh, destroyed. We've, we've seen Jeremiah describe it. We've, we're hearing Ezekiel declare it. He's just declared that Nebuchadnezzar has stormed the city. Prophetically, uh, he's declared that to the, the exiles in Babylon. And this caused the surrounding nations to go, ha, huh, oh, their God's nothing then. He can't even, their God can't even protect them. And this led to the reputation of God being besmirched. And so now the prophet has got something to say to these surrounding nations. We've already seen him uh, prophesy to Tyre, and now he's going to prophesy to Egypt and some others. Let's have a look. Ezekiel chapter 29. In the tenth year, in the tenth month, on the twelfth day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all Egypt. Speak and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lies in the midst of his streams, that says, My Nile is my own. I made it for myself. I will put hooks in your jaws and make the fish of your streams stick to your scales, and I will draw you up out of the midst of your streams with all the fish of your streams that stick to your scales. And I will cast you out into the wilderness, you and all the fish of your streams, you shall fall on the open field and not be brought together or gathered. To the beasts of the earth and to the birds of the heavens I give you as food. Then all the inhabitants of Egypt shall know that I am the Lord. Because you have been a staff of reed to the house of Israel, when they grasp you with the hand, you broke and tore all their shoulders. And when they leaned on you, you broke and made all their loins to shake. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will bring a sword upon you and will cut off from you man and beast and the land of Egypt shall be a desolation and a waste. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Because you said, The Nile is mine, I made it. Therefore, behold, I am against you and against your streams and I will make the land of Egypt an utter waste and desolation from Migdol to Syene as far as the border of Cush. No foot of man shall pass through it and no foot of beast shall pass through it. It shall be uninhabited forty years. And I will make the land of Egypt a desolation in the midst of desolated countries, and her cities shall be a desolation forty years among cities that are laid waste. I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them through the countries. For thus says the Lord God, at the end of forty years I will gather the Egyptians from the peoples among whom they were scattered, and I will restore the fortunes of Egypt and bring them back to the land of Pathros, the land of their origin. And there they shall be a lowly kingdom. It shall be the most lowly of the kingdoms and never again exalt itself above the nations. And I will make them so small that they will never again rule over the nations. And it shall never again be the reliance of the house of Israel, recalling their iniquity when they turn to them for aid. Then they will know that I am the Lord God, in the 27th year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon made his army labor hard against Tyre. Every head was made bald and every shoulder rubbed bare. Yet neither he nor his army got anything from Tyre to pay for the labor that he had performed against her. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will give the land of Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall carry off its wealth and despoil it and plunder it, and it shall be the wages for his army. I have given him the land of Egypt as his payment for which he laboured, because they worked for me, declares the Lord God. On that day I will cause a horn to spring up for the house of Israel, and I will open your lips among them. Then they will know that I am the Lord." Well, it goes on, and of course we, we do know that Nebuchadnezzar did indeed uh, conquer Egypt, and he did indeed plunder them, and indeed Egypt never, was never again a world power. Let's continue now, Ezekiel chapter 30. 
The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, prophesy and say, thus says the Lord God, wail, alas, for the day, for the day is near, the day of the Lord is near, it will be a day of clouds, a time of doom for the nations. A sword shall come upon Egypt, anguish shall be in Cush. When the slain fall in Egypt and her wealth is carried away and her foundations are torn down, Cush and Put and Lud and all Arabia and Libya and the people of the land that is in league shall fall with them by the sword. Thus says the Lord, those who support Egypt shall fall and her proud might shall come down. From Migdol to Syene, they shall fall within her by the sword, declares the Lord God. And they shall be desolated in the midst of a desolated in the midst of desolated countries, and their cities shall be in the midst of cities that are laid waste. Then they will know that I am the Lord, when I have set fire to Egypt and all her helpers are broken. On that day messengers shall go out from me in ships to terrify the unsuspecting people of Cush, and anguish shall come upon them all the day of Egypt's doom. For behold, it comes. Thus says the Lord God. I will put an end to the wealth of Egypt by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He and his people with him, the most ruthless of nations, shall be brought in to destroy the land, and they shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. And I will dry up the Nile and will sell the land into the hand of evildoers. I will bring desolation upon the land and everything in it by the hand of foreigners. I am the Lord, I have spoken. Thus says the Lord God, I will destroy the idols and put an end to the images in Memphis. There shall no longer be a prince from the land of Egypt, so I will put fear in the land of Egypt. I will make Pathros a desolation and will set fire to Zoan. I will execute judgments on Thebes. I will pour out my wrath on Pelusium, the stronghold of Egypt, and cut off the multitude of Thebes. And I will set fire to Egypt. Pelusium shall be in great agony. Thebes shall be breached, and Memphis shall face enemies by day. The young men of On and of Pi Beseth shall fall by the sword, and women shall go into captivity. At Tef Hathanes the day shall be dark, when I break there the yoke bars of Egypt, and her proud might shall come to an end in her. She shall be covered by a cloud, and her daughters shall be into captivity. Thus I will execute judgments on Egypt, then they will know that I am the Lord. In the eleventh year, in the first month, on the seventh day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and behold, it has not been bound up to heal it by binding it with a bandage, so that it may become strong to wield the sword. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against Pharaoh king of Egypt, and will break his arms, both the strong arm and the one that was broken, and I will make the sword fall from his hand. I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations, and disperse them through the countries. And I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon and put my sword in his hand. But I will break the arms of Pharaoh and he will groan before him like a man mortally wounded. I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, but the arms of Pharaoh shall fall. Then they shall know that I am the Lord when I put my sword into the hand of the king of Babylon and he stretches it out against the land of Egypt. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them throughout the countries, then they will know that I am the Lord. Oh boy, and Egypt did indeed suffer the wrath of Nebuchadnezzar and all that he did there, and God's word was fulfilled, and he keeps saying, this is what I declare will happen, it will happen, and when it happens, you will know that I did it, I am the Lord. And so, putting in, put, well, putting an end to their claim, what pff, the God of Israel, pff, what's that? Well, they'll find out. So now we conclude Ecclesiastes chapters 11 and 12. And this is where, as we get into chapter 12, we'll begin to, I hope, bring it all together and we'll see, ah, oh, now I see what he's done. He's described someone who's gone from God and this is what they've thought. They've thought money's the answer, maybe Pleasure is the answer. Maybe work is the answer. Maybe all. Maybe there's no answer. Maybe life is pointless. But then we're going to see the preacher comes to a different conclusion. We'll start at chapter 11. This is Ecclesiastes 11. Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Give a portion to seven or even to eight, for you know not what disaster may happen on earth. 
If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves on the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or to the north in the place where the tree falls, there it will lie. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. As you do not know the way the Spirit comes to the bones in the womb of a woman with child, so you do not know the work of God who makes everything. In the morning sow your seed, and at evening withhold not your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Light is sweet, and it is pleasant for the eyes to see the sun. So, if a person lives many years, let him rejoice in them all, but let him remember that the days of darkness will be many. All that comes is vanity. And by the way, light is pleasant to the eyes. This is, he's setting up what he's going to be saying in closing, that as you get old, your eyes get dim. And in, in many respects, many people, as they get old, they, they lose their sight. So in other words, when you can see the sun, this is a good day. It means you've got some health and vitality. That's just in case you didn't pick that up. Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these things God will bring you into judgment. Remove vexation from your heart and put away pain from your body, for youth and the dawn of life are vanity. So now we set up the conclusion. It's a, it's a, someone, whoever's put this together knows what he's doing. It's, he's taken us on a journey and now he's, he's saying, hang on, let me, let me bring this to a close. One day, you might be young now and life looks different when you're young. And let me tell you, as someone who's lived a bit, life looks different when you've lived a bit. So now we come to chapter 12. Remember also your creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come and the years draw near, of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after rain. In other words, you're now old. Your eyesight has failed. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men are bent, so this is your, your knees knocking, <laughs> you're, you're weak and your back, your, bone, your back is literally bent over from age, and the grinders cease because they are few, that's your teeth, and those who look through the windows are dimmed, there's your eyesight mentioned again, and the doors on the street are shut when the sound of the grinding is low and one rises up at the sound of a bird. Uh, if you, as you get older, you don't sleep so long. And if you're a young person, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but you will. And all the daughters of song are brought low. They are afraid also of what is high and terrors are in the way. The almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper drags itself along and desire fails because man is going to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets. Before the silver cord is snapped or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher is scattered at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, and the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Vanity of vanity, says the preacher, all is vanity. So in other words, if you've been living as a young person, taking pride in your youth and health and vitality, that's not going to last. Now what are you going to do? Well, this is what he says. Besides being wise, the preacher also taught the people knowledge, weighing and studying and arranging many proverbs with great care. The preacher sought to find words of delight and uprightly he wrote words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads and like nails firmly fixed are the collected sayings. They are given by one shepherd. My son, be aware of anything beyond these. Of making many books there is no end and much study is weariness of the flesh. The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. Ah, why didn't he just say that at the start? Because he's taken us on a journey that many people go on. They look to work to bring fulfillment. They look to relationships to bring fulfillment. They throw their hands in the air and think maybe there's just nothing I can do and maybe life is just what it is and it's all pointless anyway. These are the, these are the journeys that people go on. And he concludes by saying, you're wrong. Life has great meaning. Life has great purpose. 
Let us hear the end of the matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments. Then you'll live life to the full and you'll enjoy it and you'll advance to your eternal home for your eternal reward. What a great thought. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are the Lord God who declares the end from the beginning. You spoke to nations through the prophets and your word was fulfilled. We see in Ecclesiastes, the preacher concludes by saying, let us hear the end of the matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, no life to the full as a result. And Father, I pray for those who are joining with me now in this daily Bible reading, that that is exactly what they will experience. Life to the full, the fullness of life, your blessing, I pray for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Please give this a thumbs up. If you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe. And you'll see me tomorrow for our next Daily Bible. Reading.